Check, check, one, two. Definitely unstable here. And today is the very first episode of something I want to call voiceover theory. This is a show where we find something cool with an animation, video games, just voiceover in general and discuss, analyze, and show examples of how awesome these amazing artists can be. Now, on this first episode, I want to talk about something I personally like to call impact dialogue. To truly understand what impact dialogue is, I'm going to have to give you a few basic principles of voice acting and also a few other parts. But to start out, we're going to go over the number one rule when you are playing any character in voiceover. You are not playing a character. Let me explain. Whenever you approach a character you need to play, the number one objective is to make the character believable and to make it feel like they are a natural part of whatever setting they happen to be in. Everything else is secondary to this. So, if you have to do a bit about a supervillain going to a grocery store, doing his shopping, then it better sound like a supervillain in a grocery store and everything a normal person deals with in that setting, but from the viewpoint and personality of a supervillain. By Mordok's unearthly talons, if this woman takes any longer getting through this line, she'll do a better job at keeping me away from crime than Ultraman ever could. Who needs five jars of mayo, anyway? I mean, I worship all the darkest gods in the multiverse, and even I think that's a bit excessive. Oh, by the way, I have coupons. Ugh, Mordok, how you test me so... Now, I freely admit, I'm going to completely overgeneralize to an extreme margin right now. Because within the world of voiceover, there are literally hundreds of ways to read a script. You have narration, you have audiobooks, you have commercial reads, you have medical narrations, you have for documentaries, you have medical reads, you, and then you have animation and video games which have complete rules even in subsets. But for right now, we're going to focus on the world of animation and video games. And within that, we're going to focus on two basic structures. You have dialogue and also what we call efforts. Dialogue is exactly what you think it is. You need to read lines as your character in a believable way according to the setting you've been given and the character and motivation you, as the actor, have chosen to play. This is a massive oversimplification of the overall process and complexity of reading dialogue, but you get the idea for now. Efforts refer to all the non-dialogue sounds you hear within an animation and video game. More so with video games, honestly. So all those grunts, yells, and screams you hear when your character in your favorite video game climbs up a wall? Well, the voice actor has to go in and do all the sounds they're making. Take a second and think of uh, the Uncharted series with Nolan North. Nolan North had to go in and do every single little sound that Nathan Drake does throughout all those games. That is an enormous amount of time and effort, which he also has to do within the character he has created. He has to make it believable in the same way as dialogue. It has to feel natural. This takes a huge amount of time, and also, it can get a little ridiculous. Okay, that was great, man. So the next thing I'm going to need from you is your character is climbing a wall and his leg gets shot off. Which then he falls about, uh, I'd say about 50 feet, into a pit of acid. You think you can do that for me? Um, sure? Okay, so all the explanations out of the way, I get to do some silly voices, because this is what I do for a living, and I love it! But, what is impact dialogue? Well, as some of you have probably already guessed, it's a combination between dialogue and effort noises within a contained scene. Take a look at this. You no, know, it's funny. This situation reminds me of a joke. A doctor told his patient, I have bad news and worse news. Oh dear, what's the bad news? Asked the patient. The doctor replied, you only have 24 hours to live. That's terrible, said the patient. But how can the other news possibly be worse? The doctor replied, Well, I've been trying to contact you since yesterday! <laughs> okay, first of all, Kevin Michael Richardson as the Joker is amazing. Also, if you haven't checked out his other work, 
He is fantastic. Please just go look him up. See all the things he's ever done. God, he has the most smooth and buttery voice ever. And also he does some really hilarious stuff, but I'll stop gushing, I promise. But do you see the point I was trying to make about the combination? You actually see it a lot more than you think. Okay, so imagine you're in a booth. Sometimes you're by yourself, and sometimes you're with the other cast members. It all depends on the production, to be honest with you. But not only do you have to speak as a fake character, a person who does not exist, and make it believable, but at the same time you're being hit and have to combine effort noises that sound realistic to the character that you have created with the show and the writing to make it believable to an audience. I mean, think about that for a second. Just think about that scene and the effort that went into it, combining this dialogue and this amazing amount of effort noises all to wrap around this scene to a point. It's just utterly amazing to me to watch these people do this. It's fantastic, and it's almost like watching a master violinist play Mozart and then mix it with Tech 9 and it would completely and utterly work and sound amazing. Which... And that really would. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this up because I could gush for hours on voice actors. And out of all honesty, they're amazing and I love them. They astound me every day with the things that they do. And it's one of the reasons I got into this business. Um, but I'm going to wrap this up so I don't bore you anymore. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm just starting out with this, so I have no idea what I'm doing, but I love talking about this stuff. Like I said, voice acting has been my passion since I was six, so I'm going to keep going with it. I love it. But if you have any suggestions or other things you'd like me to talk about, feel free to comment below and let me know you if you enjoyed this or things you'd like, you know, changed. Um, and if you really did enjoy it, um, be sure to, you know, like, share, and subscribe. That would be great for me as I could keep doing more and more of this and actually make it more detailed. Um, but I'm glad you enjoyed it. And if you didn't, uh, I'm sorry. Um, but I've been definitely unstable. And as always, do what you love. <laughs>